Hello everyone and welcome back to War Game Red Dragon. We have a 3v3 on Gunboat Diplomacy for you guys today and it is going to be a destruction match. I'm playing as Baltic Front as is one of my allies, one retry, while it looks like my other ally, Sensei, is going to be playing as Yugoslavia. So right away we have, of course, three command vehicles and only two spawns, so my CV is going to be going up toward Dimitri. And my sort of role here this game is going to be, as shown by these defense markers, kind of to hold the center to assist in Anna as well as in Sheraton and just see how the game progresses. Of course, destruction is a little bit different from conquest in that it's not always best to be the attacker and sometimes you can win without holding the majority of zones. Uh, well, <laughs> if you can make up the income difference. So right away we have some paratroopers coming in from Verger, Anyafas, and a Siphon, which means an Israeli player. But my Ito 90 is going to be a very nice answer to that, and we're able to take down those helicopters pretty well, also with the help of the Praskas from Sensei, so these guys are very long range. Only two missiles each, but 33-25 meters for 40 points is quite a good area denial system. I also have some specialist infantry headed up through those woods. I like to try and get spike teams threaded through here, I think it can really disrupt your opponent's supply lines. Um, and, you know, we're getting some good income. We have Ivan, Yacht, Dimitri, and Anna capped. Pretty light hold in Anna, honestly. This was kind of worrying me at the start because I thought, well, maybe they'll try and do something quick and aggressive and push from center to Anna, knowing that it's un an unusual take. But instead, we have a lot going on in Elena. So, Verger with his Israeli deck, Sefe E is going in after it looks like a Hera 2 from my ally, and I started to get a little worried. Yeah, our flanks might have some trouble. We might have overloaded the center, which is going to be a really static position. So, of course, we have Panzer Groms, we have Spike Teams, Eroquois Yekri, and all of this, which is nice, but as it turns out watching the replay at this moment, there's actually nothing in this town and not a lot in this denial area. So, there was a lot of investment for not very much gain. On the other hand, Elena is stacked with enemy units. Uh, Jack Zaitsev as well on the opposing team, putting some infantry in there, Oslo PCs means something commonwealthy, maybe British, uh, etc. I believe these guys, oh uh, yeah, so that's that's going to be Anzac, which probably means commonwealth, not an Anzac national deck, and we can see those guys are just getting kind of stacked up. Uh, we are going to get a command vehicle over here, so one retry is going to help cap that while I'm getting, oh what was I buying? Ah uh, yes, the Pivonia. Uh, so this is a 10 HE artillery piece, and I thought, you know what, let's get the shelling started a little early and just really go to town on these guys, because, I mean, that sort of force protection can be really wonderful in destruction games. Panzergrom moving up in response to a couple of Tsefe'is, getting a little closer than they probably should have, and Erkwe Zekri as well, that's one down, let's see if we can get another one that's getting a little too close, a little closer than he should, and he does open up. But, actually, my allies, Erkois Yekri, get the kill. I was very sad about that. I was sitting there going, I have a Grom, I have an Erkois, I have a Promets, and not able to get it. You can see, also, my infantry are repositioning a little bit after that volley, because I had expected some sort of retaliation, whether it was a bombing run or, more likely, some sort of howitzer or other artillery. Uh, nice work from Sensei here, getting a couple of things over the side, a replacement Hera 2, and then also some scout infantry, just to make sure that we don't get flanked. Uh, I've seen Hilo rushes come all the way over to the side, down through these mountains, and then over. So there's already a Heritu blocking, there's an Otab 71 here, and it's just nice sort of awareness, uh, allowing a, res a responsive, flexible force if need be. Uh, in the meantime, this is, or well, we're going to speed up a little bit just because this game, like a lot of other destruction games, kind of suffers from being a little bit static for a while, though there are some nice engagements, and we can finally see there are reinforcements coming in. Verger deciding, okay, well, since my team hasn't capped that town, that his team definitely should. We're able to get a little bit of fire on those BTRs, but infantry are already in, and now we should see the Pavonias with their starting volley. So let's go ahead and see where that's going. One, two, and I think... Oh, we actually missed the first shots. Those YP-408 PWIs, so those are, of course, Dutch, um, should be coming in, and I unfortunately did lose a couple units, including you know, Musties and KTs, to my opponent's artillery as well. So this is very much going to be a artillery brawl. Uh, I kind of enjoyed it, I thought it was a lot of fun, uh, and that's not all, there are some, some mobile engagements too, but it's very much a who has the better targeting choices and targeting priorities. So right away, off the bat, we are up at almost 400 points to our opponent's 240. A fair number of those kills are mine, but honestly a lot of that was just because a little bit overzealous play by the Israeli player sort of didn't serve him all that well. But now we have a Mogwan, and that is always 
a pain right in my ass because he's going to be shooting at my Brummet. Uh, mortars coming in also against the Spike team in there, which is a very fragile Spike team. Panzer Grom probably should have moved for those two at this point. And you can see my allies Bechota are moving back, and I lose a Musty as well. But marking the Moglon and trying to predict where they end up going, so, I mean, I don't know. I, I saw them, I had zoomed in just like that, and I saw them moving backwards, and so I'm going to target that position. But as it turns out, they actually slid down to the end of the tree line. Probably should have expected that, but I really didn't at the time. And uh, the targeting isn't going to be with the Pavonia, it's going to be with the Telakar mortar carriers. So a, a little bit less splash damage there, a little bit more uh, of a mistake if you if you get the wrong spot and you're actually trying to kill things. So in the meantime we have KTs coming out, getting some infantry up through here because, I don't know, this is a little static for my liking. We have taken a couple more losses now, so 400 to 320, and a couple times this game it, was, it gets exceedingly close, uh, a little bit hard to tell who's winning. Of course we do have the income advantage with Cheriton capped, and it looks like Elena about to be capped here by Sensei, so he has some command infantry coming in in an oak tub. And again, those mortars do just completely miss. <laughs> Bit of a mistake. But as these command infantry get in, we actually have plus eight on our opponents. Well, more than that, because center isn't capped either. And we didn't we didn't knock them off of center. They just hadn't capped it until just now. So now we're at a plus eight. Before then, we were at a plus eleven. And that's going to allow us to do some cheeky things. A little bit of counter fire coming in, but we're making sure to move the Pavonias, to move the Telekers, at least for right now, <laughs> anyway. Uh, not that, that should give you guys any sort of hints, wink wink, nudge nudge, for what's going to happen later on in the game, but uh, for right now we're, we're doing a decent job of avoiding that counter fire, and also having things that are spawning in not get struck by it either, which can often be a bit of a pain in the ass if you're shooting right from your resupply route, so I've called things in before, then the counter battery against my artillery pieces has stunned or damaged or otherwise disturbed the reinforcements coming in. So. We do have eyes in this town pretty well, it's on a Hume 95 in there, a couple Zeldas, I figured probably there were three or four units of infantry in there now, because I hadn't quite been able to stop the new routes uh, with that spike team, although that was a very nice kill, we actually got the Zelda and the infantry inside, and you can see the Zelda immediately pulling back, second shot, plus five, which means the infantry were out, but <clears throat> so much the better for us right now, and during the game we were, we were marking these, but there's... These are all either mortars or they're the cheaper, somewhat quicker artillery pieces that are really hard to counterfire, so not too much success in that regard. And you can see it's starting to take a toll on the woods position. Panzer Grom's still there, but my spike team has been killed. Eroquois are still there. Uh, and yeah, so this is what we're doing, is just calling out the mark position of all of those different mortars. Um, whether or not that really did great work is, well... It doesn't at quite at the moment. So, Telekers are going to be smoking up the entrance to that town, and this is a little bit transparent. I mean, it's one of the the two strategies enumerated in, of course, the Wargame Bootcamp wiki on how to attack, and I think it's even noted there that, yeah, smoke and attack can work, but it's not exactly subtle, and so if your opponent's prepared, things can end really poorly. Now, you guys can probably see as well, I have the Pavonias firing, trying to damage the Tsanahim to get this position a little bit more scattered. It actually works. Tsanahim are repositioning Mongolon out in the open, KTs shooting at them, and Charioteers from one retry getting a nice shot on the Mongolon, forcing them back into the woods and away from this position. So I'm hoping that I can get some Rastis in Kurima, or no, sorry, some Kartanyekri up there in Mustis. And, I mean, these guys are amphibious, so I can even dodge the bridge in a little bit of danger there and shoot right for the smoke to try and keep them away from enemy fire. So, other musties moving up, and this was a bit of a questionable decision. I just wanted those recoilless rifles online, and we do actually get them for just a second before I move. Kartanyekri get a nice kill, but taking a little bit of counter fire here, and we'll zoom back out in just a moment, but this is one of those where I was sitting there going, you know what? It's destruction. I'm going to attack. <laughs> I can occasionally be a little bit too aggressive for my own good, um, given my current experience level or, or lack thereof. But Yekri moving forward, engaging with Tanahim, is not going to be the best engagement. Tanahim are shock and, and the Yekri are not. But Kart and Yekri should be able to help out as well, and I do have those vehicles back there still. Also, Erequois doing some nice protection against its Cepha E, but not quite hitting. And it's actually the Ito 90 that's able to take him out. Seed plane coming in, just hoping for a lucky shot or two, and. A nice shallow dive there, so hopefully staying away from IR 
uh, artillery pieces, and you can see also my ally Sensei is moving out Mechanizovna, fighting against Quartermaner and some commandos in the forward town here, so we're really making an aggressive push to try and get Cheriton for ourselves. Evac order, this one was a little bit less good of a dive, and you can see it does draw IR fire. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it, it kind of works out. Sanahim and Yekuri fight themselves basically to exhaustion. I've lost a couple of my vehicles, but the other ones are still getting good supporting fire on there, and a nice move by the Sanahim able to track down and kill my Yekuri, but the Kartan Yekuri should have a good time with that. In the meantime, Napalm Artillery, this was brutal. The Napalm Artillery a couple times this game was just very nice uh, by the Blue 4 team, and the Mechanizov and the Pez are going to have a rough time with that. Of course, the Core Mariner will too, but he's actually able to kind of get out of dodge there. Well, actually, no. That was worse. He moved into the round of the uh, next the next bit of the, that volley, so uh, I guess bad for him. Kart and Yekri just chasing down Sanahim, trying to make sure these guys don't escape, and I had wanted to get into town-to-town -town fighting with them in the same block, but I uh, wasn't quite able to do it, and I just decided, you know what, this is fine. The Kart and Yekri are going to win against these damaged Sanahim, and that should be good enough for right now. We also have more Yekri just moving across the bridge. Yeah, they'll probably be spotted, but at least ATGM teams won't be able to do a hell of a lot. So, AH-64 TD coming in, and this was a bit of an odd choice, I think, for what was going on right now. It's not like there was a big tank push or anything like that, but I guess it's just defensive against things like that. And it does make me move my spike vehicle back, because that will die to a to a TD quicker than, than you believe. And, okay, so a couple BWPs do go down to it, and that that's pretty nice. And those guys are, what, 20 points each? Kurnos coming in, and this looked to be just a little bit defensive. Um, actually, I don't know. No, 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 that's a bomber. The electro-optical missiles there, and shooting at the Kartan Yekri. I do dodge, but still about four kills there off of the Kurnos, and my Kartan Yekri are not going to be all that useful, other than denying infantry moving across an open field, and for eating <laughs> the enemy artillery shells, which it's not a use that I would exactly love. In the meantime, my ally has been pushed out of the other town in Cheriton, and this made me a bit uncomfortable. It would have been nice to have you know, both of these towns held and then we could start projecting force even further, maybe get a spike team up, something like that, but an F-111C is going to be dashing my hopes. These guys, huge, huge bombs, 4,000 kilogram bombs. We do get one shot turbine failure and not quite able to get the kill there, which means you will be coming back. My Kart and Yekri down to a single man, so the one squad was killed. Spike team, this is why I smoked up the first advance, I just got a little bit lazy about it the second time. Um, does take out both Kart and Yekri and the vehicle they rode in on. Well, no, sorry, Yekri and the vehicle they rode in on. Just free points for my opponent off of either a 20 or 25 point ATGM team. So, really nice return on investment for them there. And you can see they have actually taken, I mean, it's a five point lead, but it's still a lead, right? So, this is a very tight game, and we got an advantageous map position here because it makes it really hard for them to counter camp us in Sheridan, but at what cost, right? So, more artillery coming in from my allies, and you can see, well, I don't know, I mean, I'm sure that has some sort of good effect around uh, over time. Marking still Maglons in Cheriton, actually, that team is right here, moving toward that woods. And I think this actually worked out pretty well for us, because in response to the attack markers, I had already just fired the Pavonias, and so the Maglons were effectively moving toward the pre-sighted position. Uh, not quite enough to get them, it looks like, yeah, no, so narrow dodge. If that volley had come about five seconds earlier, the Mogwans would have been hit by it, but as it is, they are able to get out. Very annoying, I wanted that kill. I think our entire team had wanted that kill, and we weren't quite able to do it. Actually, it looks like maybe with mortars? No, no, those are targeted a little bit too far back. This is a very lucky Mogwan team, and I would hate to be standing in that field just watching shells rain down all around. Mortars opening up too, and still two points of health. Okay, down to one, and let's see what can be done there. Yes, okay, finally taken down by a mortar team of all things. You do also get eyes on the Mar 240s. This is part of why we wanted this forward position. Eroquois Yekri have really good optics and are able to get a nice bit of vision. Larto 2 sparring with my, with my PST, and we actually got the kill. So that was a bit of a gamble. Honestly, one frontal armor, either one of us would have died. Uh, just got a little bit lucky, and my I mean, my vehicle's still spotted there. Bombing run comes in, gets some good kills, but the plane gets taken down, unfortunately. And it's 875 to 920, so we have clawed things back a little bit better. Hawk Heos is a valuable target, but protected by the TD means that we're going to have to use some creative 
creative methods to get the kill and my spike vehicle unfortunately is spotted and here we go. I did say earlier he'd die faster than you believe to that sort of helicopter and well, there's his poor little sad carcass there. Just sitting at the edge of the woods going, why? Why did you do this to me? Uh, however, we were able to get some nice fire on them R240s, so taking out your opponent's artillery in a game like this can really be wonderful. Oftentimes, a destruction match, there's going to be a lot of fobs because it's going to be expected to be a supply-heavy game and maybe even a longer game at that, particularly up to 6,000 points to win, which seems like it's low odds given how most people play that we get there before 40 minutes is up, even with three people. So. Uh, killing the actual units can deny a lot more enemy firepower, we actually wiped the whole squad of three there, uh, than taking out resupply or, I mean, that could be good, but just denying them the ability to shoot at all is often a very good thing. My own mortars are still alive, my pivonias are just shooting and moving, so repositioning yet again after that last volley to avoid the same fate. Avia28 coming in from one retry, and I think he's trying to clear this town, trying to push into it, but Hakios is going to make that really rough time. We also have, it looks like, an air superiority fighter coming in. See if the Avia can get out, and actually did right then, so pretty nice. Seaplane was coming into support and actually took a hit from something, but the Hakios is a problem because it's not radar, so it's, you know, I think it's one of the best non radar AA pieces in the game in terms of plane denial, just because you don't lose much range, and not being radar is wonderful for screwing with enemy seaplanes. So, um, big infantry push coming in from Sensei and one retry, a bit of a combined effort there, and able to chew through some Shiatet who are on the retreat, but mortar fire coming in is going to be really bad, so panicked and stunned infantry moving slower, shooting slower, shooting less accurately, and stoot tripping in the town are going to be a brick wall. So, these guys of course do carry a mini-me, and you know, in addition to shot training, for 20 points you get a C7, pretty good primary weapon, and the mini-me is of course one of the best in the game, if not the best in the game for tertiaries. So Bechota just gets shredded, the Mechanizovina down to five men left out of three squads, and this was this was bone crushing. So I brought up a tank, I thought, you know, maybe it would be a good idea to have some sort of fire support in and around this town, immediately killed by an ATGM team I was trying to avoid. I was trying to, I was trying to reverse it back this way, keep the frontal armor facing toward that town, and then get back around out of out of line of sight by using this village as well as the little bit of a slope here to protect the tank. And no, this was just a bad idea and I shouldn't have done it. So mistakes were made, I'm getting a little bit of revenge killing an Oshkosh kind of out of spite. <laughs> I mean, poor little resupply vehicle. I had to manually target him and I felt bad while doing it, but you know, all's fair in love and war as they say. Uh, Tornado F3 coming in and we're now at about a 225 point well, 220 point lead, I suppose, which is pretty comfortable. So, matches like this, that's that's kind of reasonable for you know, this touch and go thing where we are trying to have ongoing engagement, particularly where we've been so aggressive. My own ASF's able to just barely get out as there was Tornado F3s. I mean, if they were better ASF's, I think I would have potentially lost a plane there. I just kind of got lucky. And unfortunately, I do lose my mortar teams. They fired a bit too much smoke from the same position for a bit too long. Of course, smoking up this whole position a little bit too late. If I had done that previously, my tank would still be alive, so a uh, bit of a learning curve there. I did also mark this as defense. I think this was not meant to go like this at all. So the Yekuris and the BTR is probably meant to be amphibiously pushed across the river before unloading. Avia 28 is coming in trying to get some sort of revenge for that, and the Stutrippen are unfortunately able to completely dodge. My Avias get out, but it was a wasted bombing run and a wasted investment. I mean, is there anything left of this town? <laughs> oh, that's great. Just look at the just wanton destruction there. But I mean, Stutrippen get out, 10 men left out of 30, so very nearly getting kills on squads there, but not quite. And the Yekuri have just been pounded into nothingness, BTRs as well, just pounded into nothingness, spotted and taken out by enemy artillery. And that was a really bad mistake, so we've lost most of our 225 point lead, down to within 40 points, Moglan team spotted, the BTRs are not going to be enough to get that done, and I mean, these Yekuri are on the edge of death as well. If those guys die and the BTRs die, as I fully expect, we could be, uh, well, we, we, we could have been fighting a very losing battle there, but a little bit of revenge against some specialist teams. My spike's still able to just do excellent work. Down to five missiles left because they've been just that killy. 
and I'm hoping, I was really hoping to get a shot on the Honk Heos, but I think it's a bit too far away. So let's speed things up to two just for a little bit as this sort of argument over the middle does continue for quite a while. Uh, Maglon team spotted, but a lot of uh, just artillery back and forth and back and forth. Spike team does die, and AA marked probably by Sensei, which at that point that's good enough, but I also did want these Mar 240s from the Israeli player, so that was marked by one retry, and I think that was the targeting priority for the Pavonias, so let's see if we can follow these shots again. I do kind of like watching that, and yeah, they're definitely headed that way. First shot in the air, and let's see, these guys are all at full strength and calm. Ooh, that looks beautiful. Just a little too far. Second shot coming in, one kill, 70 more points. And let's see, second volley should be any second. Ooh, I would have loved to kill those Delhurs, but they're a bit more difficult of a target to kill. Third shot coming in, gets another Mar. Last one stunned, panicked, down to two strength. Let's see what we can do, come on. Last volley, last volley. Not able to do it. I think I might have retargeted, no, here it is. There's the last couple of shells. And the Mar 240 is killed. Wonderful, so we got all three, very nice. F-111C, however, is going to get some revenge, and those Erkois Jekeri have really nowhere to run, so just smacked by, by a huge, huge bombing run, and that will deny us line of sight on some of those artillery positions that... I mean, here's the thing. The farther forward you push your artillery, the better its accuracy is going to be, because the dispersion is proportional to range. So, on the one hand, I get it. On the other hand, these guys were way too far forward. Spotting them with that sort of forward infantry should not really have been possible, and you can see this, this is just a graveyard. This is not the first time we got that nice volley off there, and it's a lot of points of artillery dead, which also means it's a lot of points of artillery not killing things on our end, so kind of questionable play. Counter battery after the Pavonias, of course, is a swing and a miss as they're already repositioned and already firing once more. Seaplane coming in from one retry, and a Cheetah Prandle is going to be feeling his wrath there. Evac ordered right away, so very nice control, and the Tornadoes are going to be supporting a push from Ra'ams with Sol H missiles. Not quite sure where they were targeted, looks like one kind of gets confused, but maybe they were just supposed to be sitting in here. Tornado sparring with MiGs, let's see what we can do. Swing and a miss, we get one tornado and might be able to get out? No, so I do lose a MiG, but my ally coming in with his MiGs of his own is able to get the second tornado, so that did end up working in our favor. Ra'ams now sparring with us as well, and I don't know, I mean he got, he got one, so it works, I guess, but this guy's stunned. Kind of embarrassed that he wasn't already killed. I'm not sure why my Aitos and the Nevas weren't opening up, but we were able to get him there. 150 points off of that Ra'am, and even more off of some artillery in the background. At this point, things are starting to get a little bit, a little bit uh, tinged in our favor, as we have gotten about a 480 point lead, close to 500 points, and we're still trying to push, still trying to push, and this is one of the effects of that difference in income. So we've had, we had a plus 8 for a while, Elena has been counter-capped, but we still have a plus 4, uh, and that means that every casualty is less of, less of an irreplaceable loss for us than it is for them. We are engaging a couple BMP-1 TJJs, I like these guys, they're not perfect, but you know, in big numbers they can do pretty well, firing at a 55 point recon vehicle and getting the kill, so even if the Bisons do manage to kill the other one, which I doubt, that should still work out pretty well for us, but Stu Troopin from Maverick, just an absolute brick wall the entire game, uh, denying us this town. And I mean, we've smacked it with artillery, we've bombed it into oblivion, we've pushed infantry across a couple times now, and just no long-lasting success. Some counter-battery fire going in against the Bisons, but I don't think it's going to be enough. They just scooted back a little bit, and it's, it's enough distance to have them dodge. And I did lose my BMP-1 TJJ. I, it wasn't to the Bisons, it was to other artillery, but it was good play nonetheless. And <laughs> we really wanted those two troop and dead, but I think they push forward into these towns. I think they're just, every time they're spotted and engaged, they move. Which, I mean, hey, that's, that's how you do it. That's how you avoid getting shot and killed. So, taking a look at the field as a whole, uh, it looks like Sensei has a pretty good lock on this position, a lot of recon and things like that. Ra'am going down to F-18Cs, themselves taking a bit of return fire, but not too bad. And over on the left, this is still really light. And it, it did worry me for a lot of the game, but 
Ericoise over here, Super Puma, Salamandra. There's enough there that we shouldn't be taken by surprise too badly, at least not yet. And I don't know. I mean, quad stack spike teams in the most predictable place possible. I would not have done this just because I was I was amazed it hadn't been shelled by howitzers yet. If I was sitting back here, if I was on the other team and I had my Pavonias and I didn't know what I wanted to shoot at, but my guns are ready to shoot, I would have targeted this town and just said, there's got to be something in here, probably a weapons team, and that means I can get a couple kills or more every time I get a hit. So, Bazmaster Persh sparring with an L19 evac order, but it might be too late, and looks like three shots, three misses, L19 is able to get out and return fire from my own MIGs, as well as some ground-based AA is able to take him out. Unfortunately, I don't get the kill there, but uh, yeah, such is life. And such are our team games, right? So 75 points off of a kill on a Stormer, and that is from Pavonias. So we were getting a lot of kills on things that are in the woods, and I, I kind of expected that was where their CV would be, but it's a lot of space, and howitzers don't have that high spread, which is good. You want precision, but at this point it's going to be a bit too much. Verger on the other team does leave the game. I mean, we're nearly a thousand points up, and we had some very nice engagements in the air. So things are getting a little out of control, kind of quick. T55 Empion coming up, and this was just intended to sit in the corner of the woods here, and then I don't know what was going through my head. I was, I was going, well, maybe I can get them over here. I think I wanted them in these woods if I could get it there, especially you know, as we, we have Eriquois to spot here, split up into three groups. Pretty good for their longevity, and I do like that move, making sure they aren't all taken out in a single engagement. And right away, we can see ADATS was marked, artillery on the way, but he is getting out of dodge back into the woods. Smoke trying to block off this route, and more reinforcing, probably Core Mariners, are already on the way. Of course, my Pion was killed by that same flipping ATGM team that got my big tank, so it's kind of pissed about that. Yekri, meanwhile, are holding the line, and the Dutch player Maverick is trying to push a couple things forward, probably just seeing what I had, right? I mean, empty transports. That seems like a, let's see what's there so I can hit it again. Um, so I, I move things around a little bit, but this town's pretty full. I don't have a ton of options short of moving all the way back here. And yeah, you can see artillery is coming in at the positions that I fired at from. I, I'm not sure it was necessary to push forward with the YPIs. I, no, sorry, the PWIs. Maybe, but he knew, he should have known we still held this position. He hadn't forced us out of it. So artillery would have been good there pretty much regardless. Iroquois Yekri, Cart and Yekri filling out a little bit on the side of Cheriton. I noticed it was a little bit thin. I think just a bit more of an effort in Elena. And one observation is there was really not much fighting going on over here. And a little bit of artillery against those woods, as well as some good uh, covering fire, can make the bridge crossing, particularly on the far end here, kind of a, a, good, a good thing to do. I wouldn't say easy, but easily coverable and hard to defend against because once you clear that ridge there's not really that much there short of these towns so if you attack through and go to the right uh, then you can defend yourself in the farther back towns i've done that before with weapons teams and if you get uh, man pads team there and an atgm it hits really really rough uh, to have the uh, blue force side shake so evac ordered on a seaplane and i really did not like that evac curve just going right over all of these positions for IRAA, but fortunately nothing there uh, for us right now. Plum and S triple stacked by Sensei, and this was just beautiful to watch the whole game. Uh, getting a couple damage, a couple damaging shots, it looks like no kills that we can see. Oh, okay, so we did see the points from it. Dead Stormer, 75 points is pretty easily identifiable. Avia 28 bombers coming in just because we were up a thousand points, we were still wanting to be a little bit aggressive. And these guys were supposed to support Ranico coming in on the ground, but an MLU is coming in. Avia 28s, of course, have 15 strength, but one of them does get shot down, unfortunately. It looks like the ADATs and the MLU kind of teaming up to take him down, and no points on my bombing run either, so a complete waste there. But Ranico are going to be very nice, and I thought we need something that can finally chew through those two troop and, and some of the core mariners that have been giving us trouble the whole game. Meanwhile, Iroquois Zekri moving back, they've been dropped down from 20 strength to 2. Uh, kind of rough, and it turns out there were no enemy infantry here, so my Ranico are moving up, trying to engage with YPIs and Core Mariners across the way, but artillery answering really quickly, and I'm trying to stay out of the way of it. It looks like it was back in the smoke zone, and my only conclusion is that these guys were probably retreated in response to the smoke, just setting up a trap in this town, 
very nicely done, and my Ranico definitely suffered from it, so I'm trying to hide them farther away while I can get other elements up. Also, while well, we can get some support from Plamonesses and other artillery farther back. So, pounding into the town, I really wish it had been this one, where, where all those poor Mariner were sitting, because that would have been uh, pretty wonderful for us, but alas, no such luck. And, <clears throat> wow, uh, I don't know, it's just, this was a mortar fest, artillery fest, just all of these towns, the whole game, just getting absolutely pounded, but, uh, I mean, the defense did not really crumple, right? So we've pushed forward, but it's far from being broken through. Core Mariners are going to be moving up, giving my Ranico a really hard time. These guys, of course, are also elite training, but 15 strength. So, ordinarily, a lot of people will say that's not worth the price tag, but, I mean, if it wins you a fight against Ranico Yekri, of course, we do get a nice kill there. That was my other um, bomber coming in again, and unfortunately lost, so... Once again, not worth it in terms of sheer points, but if it did damage the Core Mariners and allow my Ranico to win the fight, it could well be worth it tactically, because the Core Mariners won't be able to resecure that town, my Ranico will still hold it. More smoke coming in from more mortars on my end, Ranico dodging some more fire of their own, and I'm trying to get a couple more units up, just super elite infantry, to be able to tear through uh, the enemy positions here, and just keep them flat-footed on the defensive all the way through the end of the game, uh, which... I guess was my way of saying I don't want any late game surprises, but F-111C coming in and I was terrified. I was sitting there going, no, 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 and my Ranico in the front get killed, but that's better than if it had been targeted a little bit farther back and both of these reinforcing groups might have been killed. So two groups down and that is very expensive. These guys are 35 points each, so that's 70 points to my opponent there, but we have 40 men now in these towns and at least that will be some sort of good defensive measure assuming that they can stay alive. <laughs> if nothing else, this is drawing all of their attention, all of their artillery, onto a point that doesn't really make that much of a difference. MiG coming in, sparring with the MLU, and unfortunately swinging a miss on my part, and a hit on his, so L-19s are going to have to try to carry the day, but the MLU gets out. So we started off with some pretty good airplay, I had some pretty nice kills there, but as the game went on, I, I used the bombers too aggressively, and I lost both of my ASFs, so not much left in the tank for me, uh, as there's only 3 minutes and 40 seconds left in the match. It's not catastrophic, but still. Smoke trying to block off line of sight, allowing Aranico to move up unobserved. And this actually did work pretty well. Uh, they were spotted for maybe a second or two, which does give away the game, but at least they can't be direct fired by things farther back. Eyes on that Stormer, which means that there will be artillery coming in on that position real, real uh, quickly here. And you can see Sensei has marked it as that's his next target. And I was just trying to get Ranico across and, I don't know, push infantry here, but Commando's 90. These guys do really well, so my Ranico were panicked, true, but the Commando's just... oof. And I got up into this position, and yeah, we're getting fired at from multiple sides, but I expected the Ranico to do a little bit better. I just, I think maybe I was expecting a little too much out of some units that had taken a lot of artillery fire and some bombing fire as well. These guys are stunned, they're not going to be able to kill that group of three. And with only four men left, one unit entirely killed, so I'm trying to get some some value out of this, but Commandos 90 have just completely shut me down. And I, hey, lesson learned, right? Pushing infantry into artillery fire is going to be a recipe for a bad day. And unfortunately that last man of the Commandos unit does get out, denying me the kill there, and I run into SBS with the Ranico and have to retreat. So. I should have probably kept them in this town, moved up a couple of resupply vehicles, maybe, and yeah, those would have drawn fire, but we might have been able to hold it. And Core Mariner, meanwhile, from Maverick, are going to be killing my Panzer Groms, the last man in the Eriko Ziekri team, and we've now lost our toehold across the bridge in Cheriton in the closing second of this match. So that is pretty much it. I do want to show you guys the kills and losses, though, so we're just going to speed through the last couple engagements of the game. Radobronki moving up, but not a ton of success there and that's going to be all she wrote. So, kills and losses, we had 4,055 for, well, <laughs> 4,010 kills, 4,055 losses, a little bit of friendly fire there for the Blue 4 team, uh, versus 3,325 losses on our side and 3,291 kills on theirs. Uh, the 91, I believe, comes from Napalm, which can give partial points. It's a little weird. Uh, in terms of my own KD, 1935, 1665, not exactly crazy good. But I think the field position we got from that uh, early push was very nice and helped us secure a nice, comfortable game. 
In terms of units that did really well, the Ito 90 with that opener was able to kill an Onyafa that was carrying, it looks like, Magwan, <laughs> uh, Siphon, and the Seifa E, so very valuable there. The Pavonia is getting some really great work. The Mar 240s each were 70 points, and uh, a little bit of infantry and transports besides Genie, <laughs> of all things. So, War Crimes infantry for the win. Spike team did pretty well. Other Pavonia did very well, getting the Hakios, getting a Milan team finally, and two more Mar 240s, so. Very much a good return on investment there. Infantry kind of struggled, Kartanikri did okay, killing Tanahim, but uh, spike teams were very nice. I don't know, it was a good match. I learned a couple of things about engaging uh, in aggressive infantry actions, and hey, that's always what you want to do, is take the lessons of the previous game and use them in the next one. So that's all we've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around, and we'll see you again real soon. Mm -hmm.